Both breeds of bull terrier which exist today originate from a cross between the bulldog and terriers. This bulldog cross terrier was originally bred by the sporting fanciers in Victorian England for the purpose of dog fighting, although it was also used for bear baiting, badger baiting and ratting. Pictured here is a bulldog cross terrier called Trusty. This dog was owned by Lord Camelford and was reputed to be the winner of 50 fights. In 1809, Lord Camelford, as a token of his esteem, presented Trusty to Jem Belcher, the famous bare knuckle fist fighter. This picture shows early bulldog cross terriers with smooth coats. And this picture shows early bulldog cross terriers with rough coats and indicates that both smooth and rough coated terriers were used in the breeding of early bull terriers. However, seeing as it was mainly the fancy of sporting bulldogs that were crossbreeding their bulldogs with the terriers, it was the smooth coated versions that were fancied and nurtured. The two types of terrier used in the breeding of bull terriers from 1809 onwards were the black and tan terrier and the white English terrier, which is now extinct. These two terriers were crossbred with bulldogs to create three different types of bull terrier, known today as the bull terrier, the Staffordshire bull terrier and the American pit bull terrier. Between 1850 and 1862, Mr James Hinks, a bulldog breeder from Birmingham, crossbred an existing bulldog cross terrier with a white English terrier. The purpose of this was to breed a strain of white bull terriers. The type of bull terrier Mr Hinks bred became known as the long-faced bull terrier because of their longer muzzles, although the early examples were first criticised for lacking fighting ability and later for exhibiting a crudeness of movement inherited from the Bulldog. To answer his critics in the first instance, he matched his white Bull Terrier bitch Puss with one of the short-faced Bull Terriers at Bill Tupper's pub, where the bitch Puss killed her opponent in 30 minutes and apparently without a mark on her. After which there was less criticism of the new white strain of Bull Terrier. In the second instance, Mr Hinks introduced Dalmatian into his line to improve its movement. Pictured here is one of Mr Hink's white bull terriers. This dog is Gully the Great, sired by Hink's Gladstone out of the bitch Flory. Here is another white bull terrier of the time. Note the stop across the eyes and the cropped ears. These were the features and this was the physical shape of the white bull terrier from 1862 up until 1895, when the cropped ears were banned by the exhibition ring fanciers. From this time on, the physical shape of the bull terrier began slowly but surely to change. Dogs appeared now with their ears in their natural, uncropped condition. Apart from appearing with their ears uncropped, the eye shape also gradually began to change. From the original round eye, the breed was now appearing with an arm and shaped eye and the stop across its eyes filled in with bone. This filled in head was intended to prevent the eyes from being damaged during fighting and the arm and eye was intended to drain off blood from the eyes and prevent pit blindness. Although dog fighting had been illegal for some years, breeders continued to value the sporting qualities in the breed and the standard which Mr Hinks had set with his bitch puss was if not publicly, then privately a standard the other breeders attempted to aspire to. This is noticeable by the number of bitches bred by breeders other than Mr Hinks, yet all named Puss. Breeders still fancied the cropped ears at this time and so began to breed their dogs with naturally erect ears. Pictured here is a white bull terrier from 1901. 
The fancy at, the, at this time also preferred a much straighter front leg and tighter knit feet. This type appears to have been the trend up until the 1930s, by which time an entirely new generation of fanciers had been born. These fanciers were used to seeing and exhibiting bull terriers which had a lack of stop across the eyes, erect ears and straight fronts with tight knit feet. It's hardly surprising then that these fanciers emphasised these features and by the time the 1930s arrived the white bull terrier appeared looking thicker set with a straight head, straight legs and erect ears and these were all features which the fanciers of the time considered to be typical of the original white bull terriers. The majority of fanciers accepting the breed as it appeared to them in their time and breeding the type which was popular. Over the next 30 years the head shape of the bull terrier went from filled to overfilled and in the 1960s this type of bull terrier was commonplace. You can see that the changes are now obvious. The head is overfilled, the legs are appearing shorter, the body is close coupled and the hind legs are straighter. Ten years later and the champions of the breed emerged looking like this. And they remained like this for almost 20 years. The 1990s saw the Bull Terrier emerge looking like a completely different dog to the original White Bull Terriers of 1860. Here we can see a modern day example compared with one of the original type of White Bull Terrier. The modern day example appears to have a completely different neck shape. Its head shape is different, as are its legs rib cage and hind legs. The only similarity appears to be the erect ears and the coat colour. These changes to the bull terrier's physical appearance have taken place over a period of 150 years and both the miniature and coloured versions have developed in similar fashion. The breeding of bull terriers has been described as a form of sculpting. The exhibition ring being the place where breeders exhibit these works of art. This description is based on an artistic appreciation of shape, movement. Sculpting the bull terriers is something which I specialise in. And the most important thing I've found when sculpting bull terriers is that a balanced perspective is essential. Otherwise the models that are produced appear odd, misshapen, and unbalanced.
The foundation bulldog cross terrier from which all of this stem incorporated in its nature a blend of both bulldog and terrier qualities and the early white bull terriers reflected this. The tenacity and fearlessness of the bulldog was blended with the ferocity and determination of the terrier. The blend of these two breeds into one also included physical qualities, the main two being strength and agility. This was a balanced blend, generally speaking, seen as the fancies of the time fully appreciated that too much strength could mean a lack of agility, and likewise too much agility, a lack of strength. Now let's look at some modern day bull terriers, which are representatives of the dogs first founded in the 1800s. That too much strength could mean a lack of agility, and likewise too much agility, a lack of strength. Now let's look at some modern day bull terriers, which are representative... Here we see a modern day example of the white bull terrier. This dog stands 22 inches at the withers and weighs around 70 pounds. Apart from its size, this dog is a good example of today's dogs. Its head is fairly level by today's standards. Its round rib cage and depth of chest inhibit its movement and agility but it has a decent length of leg if we were viewing our dogs as sculptures and we're looking for a balance of strength and agility we should be conscious of the eye shape of the bull terrier which was slanted in order to drain off blood and prevent pit blindness this is what breeders expected this particular eye shape to do. So when we view our dogs, we should also strive to keep a clear view and not let anything distort or cloud our view or perspective. This dog is the best example I've seen for studying regards the quality of movement in the bull types. This dog stands 17 inches at the withers and weighs about 65 pounds. If you like your bull terriers with an excess of bull qualities, then this dog is a top quality example. We've seen how the bull terrier has developed, appearing more bullish over the years, and it may be that this dog is an example of what the breed will look like in another 50 years. If it continues to develop as it has done. can study the movement in this excellent example of a bull type. This dog stands 18 inches at the withers and weighs 50 pounds and is considered a lightweight by today's standards. Although the first bull terriers measured in the 1800s were dogs as 20 inches at the withers and 45 to 50 pounds and bitches 19 inches at the withers and 39 to 45 pounds. This dog is a good example of the modern day bull terrier. The head is not too oval shaped.
The eyes are not too slanted. The chest is not too deep. And the legs are not too short. This dog also has a decent length of back. Here we see in this print the old Bulldog Cross Terrier. It was a dog such as this which James Hinks crossbred with a white English Terrier in order to breed his white strain of Bull Terrier. And pictured here, in comparison with the old print, is undoubtedly the finest modern day example of the old Bulldog Cross Terrier I have ever seen. Note the similarities. The dog in the, in the drawing was bred in the 1800s. The dog on the left of the picture was bred in the 1990s. Here we see a picture of a white bull terrier from the 1800s. For the past five years, I have been part of a small group of breeders who have been purposely breeding bull terriers in an attempt to reshape the physical appearance and temperament so that the dogs produced resemble as much as possible these original white bull terriers. Pictured here is a reshaped Bull Terrier bitch. She stands 18 and a half inches at the withers and weighs 42 pounds. Inclined to think that these reshaped Bull Terriers are thin or weak. Let me assure you, they have a wiry, flexible strength and persistence of nature that is both strong and untiring. This bitch is not a bad example of the old bull terriers. Here again we see a photograph of an old bull terrier from the 1800s. As we have done previously, let's compare this photograph with one of the reshaped bull terriers, the 1990s. shaped bull terrier. This dog stands 20 inches at the withers and weighs 45 pounds which is the height and weight of the original foundation dogs. This is what the early bull terriers look like and you are amongst the first to see them. The muscle on this dog is smooth, flexible and strong. His movement is effortless, unrestricted by bulk or excess. You can clearly see the resemblance between this reshaped bull terrier and the picture of the old bull terrier seen previously.
You can also see why the old fanciers used to crop the ears. is one of only three reshaped bull terriers in the country. Sadly, since making this video, I have to record the death of this dog. A great loss to the breed. Modern day bull terriers are bred in accordance with the Kennel Club breed standard which suggests that bull terriers should be bred for maximum substance for size of dog. Pictured here is a modern day bull terrier and an original dog from the 1800s. Note how the old dog's muscles appear smooth and lean. The old fanciers knew that muscles expand when they are exerted. This is true of the neck muscles also, and they tend to expand inwardly as well as outwardly. If it happens that they are developed to their maximum substance prior to expansion, then when they do expand, they'll press on the trachea or windpipe and restrict the dog's breathing. In the same way that the modern day bull terrier bears very little resemblance to the original foundation dogs. The way in which modern day breeders view their dogs has also changed. The Kennel Club stipulation for maximum substance for size is nowadays interpreted literally and is seen as a requirement to breed dogs of maximum physical bulk. The old breeders used to consider a dog's inner qualities as being part of its substance which was how they maintained a balanced perspective. This video shows how the bull terrier has developed over a period of almost 200 years. You've seen how the breed's physical shape and appearance has gradually changed during this time. The old bulldog cross terrier has been seen in its modern form and the bull terrier has been reshaped for comparison. It's taken five years to compile the material you've seen on this video which is a homemade video and a contribution to the breed. Just we'll go for that.